Once you've experienced the intoxicating high that comes with being the most powerful brand in the universe, you'll do anything to get back to it. But where do you look for the answers as to how? In the future? In the past? Well, to get there as quickly as possible, we're gonna need two things. A time machine and pants. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of the new adventures of He-Man. Thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below and use code TOYGALAXY for $5 off your order today. What are you eating for breakfast? Are you even eating breakfast? Or are you the type of person who goes through half their day thinking, breakfast never did anything for me, I don't owe breakfast anything. First off, don't be so dramatic. Second, let Magic Spoon show you what breakfast really can do for you. It can be nutritious, fun, and healthy. It's a better way to start your day than all those carbs and sugar. Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Also, only 140 calories. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb. Fruity is my first choice, but don't be surprised if you catch me with peanut butter, cinnamon roll, or maple waffle. I'm an enigma. You can't pin me down. Build your own variety pack with frosted cookies and cream, cocoa, blueberry muffin, and a whole bunch of other awesome flavors. They even drop limited edition flavors all the time and now ship to Canada and the UK. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Use my code TOYGALAXY for $5 off your delicious and healthy Magic Spoon cereal. Go to magicspoon.com slash toygalaxy to save $5 today. Thanks again to Magic Spoon. The New Adventures of He-Man is a 65-episode animated series that originally ran in the U.S. from September to December of 1990. Meant to be a continuation of the original series, it takes place sometime after He-Man discovered pants, but before he discovered shirts. The New Adventures of He-Man brings us back to the world of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and its sister series, She-Ra, Princess of Power, this time in a new part of that universe on a planet full of new characters and new intergalactic threats. Far off in the galaxy, inhabitants of the planet Primus, the last survivors of mankind, are under attack from the evil mutants of Denebria. Or rather, they would be if it weren't for the planet-wide defense shield sustained by the Inner Council. One more attack by the mutants and the shield will collapse. Unfortunately, fighting was long ago outlawed and forgotten, so the people have to find someone else to fight for them. With that in mind, Master Sebrian and the four scientists of Primus have created a spaceship that can exploit a newly discovered temporary rift in time. This ship will allow two of the Galactic Guardians, Flipshot and Hydron, to undertake a dangerous mission to go back in time, to an era before the Inner Council when the power of the good and the way of the magic existed. Once in the past, Flipshot and Hydron encounter Skeletor, who convinces them that he's the guy they're looking for. Meanwhile, the sorceress tells He-Man it's his destiny to go to the future to save humanity. Prince Adam finally reveals himself as He-Man to his parents, King Randor and Queen Marlena, quickly followed by the news that he's leaving to fight crime in a future time. Bad news, no more He-Man and Eternia. Good news, no more Skeletor and Eternia. Flipshot and Hydron can't decide whether He-Man or Skeletor are the good guys, so they take both of them back to the future. The New Adventures of He-Man cartoon was created to support the new toy line produced by Mattel simply called He-Man. It was an attempt to reboot the Masters of the Universe franchise after its collapse in 1987, and boy did it collapse. It's a whole thing that we've covered here many times before. Mattel first introduced Masters of the Universe as a toy line in 1982. That was followed shortly thereafter by a daily syndicated animated series produced by Filmation in 1983. It was a magical marketing combo that established the template for how brands across the board would be marketed to kids through the 1980s. It made Mattel billions. In 1985, Mattel expanded Masters of the Universe from boys' toys to girls' toys. He-Man's sister, She-Ra, Princess of Power, took on the responsibility of carrying the franchise through 1987. And while that might have been a good idea on paper, the execution proved more challenging. With Princess of Power as the primary driver on television, repeats of the regular Masters of the Universe cartoon continued in syndication, and the toy line maintained a presence at retail. But sales were already on their way down, way down from the peak of $400 million in 1986 to $7 million in 1987. 
the 1987 feature film that was intended to take He-Man to the next level to save the franchise instead sealed its doom. That said, for all of its failure, the spirit of the film would carry on within the franchise. Characters like Gwildor would be rolled into Toy Line, and Frank Langella's Skeletor would set the tone for He-Man's rival in New Adventures. A final attempt to redirect the narrative of the toy line called Powers of Greyskull would have set He-Man's next chapter in pre-Turnia, the land of Eternia's distant past. It would have seen He-Man traveling back in time to meet the forebears of the powers that made him the hero he is, including the hero named... Hero. Similar to He-Man, a young man named Grey could transform into Hero, the most powerful wizard in the universe. By placing his hand over his heart and speaking the words, Magic and strength tempered by heart, I stand for peace. Grey could become the most powerful warrior in the battle against the evil Snake Men. But techno dinosaurs and a plethora of snake-themed villains wasn't enough to save the brand. The concept never made it past a few releases and a corresponding logo on the packaging. This hero and the Powers of Grayskull concept has a lot in common with another Filmation project that was in development at the same time and only recently uncovered by James Etock. Hero in the Land of Legends stars a character that, for our purposes, we will call Hero 2. Was this an earlier pitch made to Filmation, or an attempt to salvage the ideas from Powers of Greyskull is hard to say for certain. What we do know is that by 1988, He-Man and all of the Masters of the Universe were done. Well, with one caveat, done in the U.S., because He-Man had fans all over the world. And, thanks to the delays of international distribution, some by design, some just part of the logistical process, markets outside the U.S. were still clamoring for more He-Man. The final toys Mattel produced were released exclusively to that audience to reward that audience and simultaneously serve as a testing ground for new play gimmicks. Laser Light, Skeletor, and Laser Power He-Man carry on the tradition of different variations of those two core characters. From Battle Armor to Thunder Punch and Terror Claws, Mattel introduced different play gimmicks as a way to refresh He-Man and Skeletor on the shelves. Heavily influenced by the work of H.R. Giger, Skeletor's new look is a blend of technology and organic material. He is the embodiment of the ugly side of Eternia's magic and technology. He-Man uses magic and technology. Skeletor has become magic and technology. And not for nothing, but Laser Power he-Man has a variant head released in some markets that is thought to be a Dolph Lundgren likeness, which suggests that these two figures might have also had some connection to the 1987 feature film, or at least were influenced by it. Some accounts suggest that Laser Power He-Man and Laser Light Skeletor were being developed for a whole new line of figures that would have incorporated the illuminated crystal gimmick and thereby drive the storyline, which would have been supported by a new live-action television series not unlike the live-action series Mattel actually produced in 1987, Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. But that's not what happened. Mattel carried on fielding pitch after pitch, trying to solve the puzzle of the franchise's future. Another pitch from Filmation focused on the next generation of Masters, specifically the son of He-Man and Tila, named Hero. This is a different hero from the hero of Powers of Greyskull or Land of Legend. For our purposes, we will call this Hero 3. In this Filmation pitch from 1988, according to an account by user Penny Dreadful on the He-Man.org forum, Eternia becomes endangered by an evil force which threatens to consume and destroy the entire planet. In an effort to save the infant son of He-Man and Tila, Man-at-Arms and Orko work together combining technology and magic to build a spaceship called the Javelon. Paraphrasing from Penny's post, He-Man uses this ship to send his son far into space and far into the future. Unbeknownst to him, Skeletor has also secretly stowed his own son aboard the ship in order to save the boy's life. When the Javelon crash lands. I think the planet here lands on is called something akin to Primus, but I can't recall the exact spelling. It is discovered by Darius, who names the baby Hero and acts as his mentor. Meanwhile, Skeletor's son, a product of his canoodling with Shadow Weaver, is found by Brack, who hands him off to be raised by a bunch of evil creatures and one day fight against Hero as Skeletine. It's not a dumb name, not any dumber than Snout Spout, Extendar, Squeeze, Manny Faces, or honestly, He-Man and Skeletor. What this pitch really illustrates is two things. One, Mattel was already developing toys that new character stories were going to be designed around. And two, one way or another, He-Man was going into space. Maybe he was going to time travel, maybe not, but his destiny was out there, in the stars, mastering the universe, if you will. Der böse Skeletor zieht jeden in seinen Bann. Jetzt seid ihr mein Erdlinge. Doch danach He-Man, der Kämpfer für das Gute. Das Spiel ist aus, Skeletor. Keine Chance, du Feigling. Da kommt He-Mans neuer Held. Ich hab dich besiegt, du Schurke. Du hast es geschafft. Du bist der größte im Universum. Der böse Zauber ist vorbei. He-Man, 
die fantastische Kraft. Mattel was developing the toys and looking to Filmation to provide the story. Another Filmation pitch from 1989 called Masters in Space discards Hero 3 and Skeleton recentering the adventures around He-Man and Skeletor, with Skeletor still heavily influenced by the laser light Skeletor figure. As discovered by James Etock, the series would have followed the adventures of He-Man, now Commander Adam of the Starship Eternia, traveling through deep space to confront the revitalized evil of Skeletor. In this version, He-Man and Skeletor have a climactic, climactic, seemingly final battle that ends with Skeletor blasted through a portal deep into space in the future. <laughs> Might be usable, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> now, with Orko at his side, He-Man can use a new computer device called RAM to generate a hollow projection unit to act as Adam when Adam is transformed into He-Man, and also he has a sassy talking sword. More importantly, the core characters are already here in toy form, waiting to find their actual identities. Darius, Hydron, Flipshot, Adam, He-Man, and the Starship Eternia roar through a series of high-action adventures that will take them through time and space across the frontiers of the universe. That version didn't happen either, because meanwhile, in 1989, Filmation was sold by its parent company, Westinghouse, to Paravision International, an investment consortium led by the cosmetics company L'Oreal. Just before the sale was completed, Westinghouse closed Filmation's studio and fired the entire staff, leaving only the Filmation library of previously produced television and films to be acquired in the deal. But Mattel still needed an animation partner, and that's when Jetlag Productions stepped in. Jetlag was the U.S. office of a larger animation studio called Creativity et Development, or Creative and Development, or simply C&D. C&D was the studio established by Jean Chalapon in 1987 after Deke Entertainment was purchased from him in a leveraged buyout by Andy Hayward, Bear Stearns, and Prudential Insurance Company. It's a whole thing that we've covered here many times before. The important part is that Jetlag gets the same offer from Mattel. Here's the toys we have already in production. Here's the very general story. You figure everything else out. Jetlag could have asked for the existing story bibles that Mattel had previously developed, but according to Jack Olesker, the head writer, story editor, and developer of the new adventures of He-Man, he and Jetlag chose to create their own original concept instead. Mostly different from previous pitches, yes, but all the important stuff was preserved. Time travel, techno-organic Skeletor, He-Man with pants. The new adventures of He-Man featured a more mature, more contemporary animation style, certainly evocative of anime at the time, and certainly evocative of another animated series from nearly a decade earlier that had also been more popular outside the U.S. than inside Ulysses 31. Not coincidentally, Ulysses 31 was produced by Deke Entertainment, the company that was purchased from Jean Chalapon in 1987 and a leveraged buyout by Andy Hayward, Bear Stearns, and Prudential Insurance Company. It's a whole thing that we've covered here many times before. Maybe New Adventures of He-Man was a thinly veiled shot at Andy Hayward and Deke, maybe not. Either way, it was an entirely new aesthetic from the visuals to the pacing of the series to the type of humor that Filmation had established with He-Man and She-Ra through the 80s. A definitive break from the original series that left longtime fans wondering why. This was all in service of promoting the toy line, and at the end of the day, jet lag took its cues from Mattel. Beginning in 1989 and languishing on shelves as late as 1992, Mattel released nearly three dozen figures. From He-Man to Skeletor to Butthead. Hoove, Too Tall Hoove, Hook'em Flog. I honestly don't know if this stuff is real or if I'm making it up at this point. <laughs> Vehicles like the Astro Sub, the Battlebird, Bola Jet, and Doomcopter, the modular Starship Eternia that can be reconfigured into 12 different modes with multiple starbase configurations, itself highly reminiscent of Ulysses 31's three-part spaceship. A playset called Nordor, the Lair of Skeletor and the Space Mutants, a giant asteroid with a skull on one side that looks like an eyeball from the other. One of its main play features is a projector and screen to view two reels of animated scenes as though they are part of a giant view screen in the throne room. The line also featured role-play toys like He-Man's Power Sword and Skeletor's Skull Staff, and two punch-motion activated opposing gauntlets named Terror Punch and Thunder Punch. Like the original toy line, this He-Man line came with mini-comics to help tell the story before the animated series was released. Like the original toy line, the cartoon storyline was developed independent of the toys from Mattel. There are some minor differences in the mini-comics, and there are some major differences. For instance, in the cartoon, Prince Adam reveals his identity as He-Man for the first time to his parents, King Randor and Queen Marlena. In the mini-comics, he reveals his identity for the first time to Skeletor. The ensuing blast from Prince Adam's transformation into He-Man leaves Skeletor's body torn and broken. The mini-comics show us that Skeletor's new look is a reflection of the cybernetic repairs he undergoes to keep him alive and strong. 
The new adventures of He-Man, like Masters of the Universe before it, was a vehicle for cross-media licensing, but didn't have the same reach or appeal that the original did. New Adventures never got the feature film treatment. The closest it got was a UK TV movie premiere December 24th, 1990. Not a new movie, it was just the first three episodes cut together, shown as a double feature with the 1987 Dolph Lundgren movie. Some of the episodes of New Adventures of He-Man were released on VHS. In 2012, Mill Creek Entertainment recognized the 30th anniversary of Masters of the Universe with a commemorative collection DVD set, 22 discs featuring all 130 episodes of the original cartoon, 20 episodes of New Adventures, and 39 episodes of the two 2002 reboot. As of this episode, New Adventures is available to stream in the United States on Peacock. The New Adventures of He-Man cartoon and the He-Man line of toys it supported didn't stick around as long as Mattel had hoped. But there was still some value to be had in the molds for the toys. Several of the figures showed up a few years later in 1993 as part of the Demolition Man toy line. He-Man is John Spartan, Flipshot is the Cryoclaw Tech, KO is Friendly, Visar is Blast Attack Simon Phoenix, the Bola Jet is reused and they didn't even change the name, it's still the Bola Jet. In 1996, Lou Scheimer was back with another pitch for He-Man and his adventures in time and space. This time, the action would focus on He-Man's descendant, also named Hero. For our purposes, that's Hero 4. Gretchen. Stop trying to make Hero happen. It's not going to happen. Hero, son of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe was an even longer title than the original, similar to their previous pitch from 1988, but this time including a new alter ego named Dare for He-Man Jr. While still intended to be a continuation of the original Masters of the Universe storyline, it was not intended to recognize new adventures in any way. Scheimer has said that he gave Jean Chalapon his blessing to create the new adventures of He-Man in 1990, but he wasn't going to watch it or anything. In 2008, a new, new line of Masters of the Universe action figures was produced by Mattel, targeted at adult collectors, sold through a subscription model with no supporting media. Masters of the Universe classics revisited every figure in the original toy line, including those from She-Ra, Princess of Power, and eventually characters from New Adventures as well. 2009 saw the release of Hero from Powers of Grayskull, that's Hero 1 for our purposes. 2013, New Adventures He-Man complete with pants, ponytail, removable battle armor, and helmet. 2014, New Adventures Skeletor. 2015, Hero 2, that's Hero 4 for our purposes. Laser Light Skeletor and Laser Power He-Man. In 2019, DC Comics produced a six-issue limited series called He-Man and the Masters of the Multiverse. It attempted to bring together the various timelines from comics, cartoons, movies, and action figures across nearly four decades to fight the threat of Anti-Eternia. Anti-Eternia He-Man is dimension-hopping, stealing the power of the various He-Mans, Grayskulls, and Eternias. The He-Mans that we know, including 1987 movie He-Man and 1990 New Adventures He-Man, and some that we don't know, must find a way to fight back against the expanding evil. The New Adventures of He-Man was an attempt to boldly take He-Man where he had never gone before, to a distant galaxy far, far away. Perhaps the toys didn't land with new fans who were finding He-Man for the first time. Perhaps the show didn't land with the legacy fans who had grown up with the original toys and cartoon. Perhaps it was trying to fill the void left by the departure of Star Wars from the toy shelves, but there was a reason Star Wars departed from the toy shelves. Perhaps it was simply time for the age of superheroes as the Ninja Turtles and Batman dominated the shelves. Or maybe Mattel could have had a hit on their hands if they decided to let Masters of the Universe take a break. Perhaps the new adventures of He-Man would have survived if it had been its own original toy line named anything other than He-Man. Everybody, take a breath, relax. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. Check us out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash toygalaxy if you're in the position to help the channel grow. If you would like early access to the videos ad-free, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Special thanks to all of the Masters of the Universe historians out there who did the legwork over the years to uncover the various stories about what He-Man might have been. The forums at he-man.org, James Etock, Penny Dreadful, Scott Knightlick, and our good friend whose book, The Toys of Masters of the Universe, was indispensable for researching this video, Pixel Dan. And let us know in the comments down below if you could time travel anywhere. Would you go back in time to the past or forward into the future? Follow up, how important would pants be to your journey? <laughs> Take them with you or pick up a pair when you arrive? <laughs> future pants! <laughs> Got it. Ain't no pants in the past. <laughs>